this video I want to show you how to use a bunch of different software to view contour plots um, for this particular function. z is a function of x and y, specifically z is equal to sine of y times e to the negative x. And a contour plot is like a topographical map uh, of your function. I want to know what the lines of constant height, constant z, are. Uh, and if you didn't know this, real quick, Google Maps has a beautiful uh, really nice uh, topographical map feature on it. Uh, I'm navigating here to Skyline Drive, which is in Luray, Pennsylvania. Gorgeous place to go hiking, by the way. If you ever get a chance, go there. Appalachian Trail, it's awesome. Anyway, so you go there, uh, you click this satellite thing, you hold your mouse over it, this will come down, then you click Terrain. It'll say, see geographical and topographical details on the map. So we click that, and you get this really nice view. Uh, if we zoom in, Okay. you'll see that there are these lines uh, which are lines of constant height. Uh, imagine that this window here is the xy plane and for any xy we can assign to it a height z and these little lines tell us that uh, the lines are you know always going to be at you know in this instance what 3200 feet so all these places along here are 3200 feet and you can tell a couple things from the graph you can tell where the low points are down here in this valley where somewhere around uh, looks like 2,000 feet, 1,600 feet, and all the way up this ridge, um, greater than uh, 3,200 feet, right? So it's pretty useful, and um, if you're a hiker, this is a really useful thing. But in multivariable calc, we do the same thing with our functions. Um, they're a function z, the height, is a function of x and y, and we want to find uh, this topographical map, this contour plot uh, for each function. So Wolfram Alpha and MVT give similar views. We're going to plot this function. I'm going to show you how to use these different um, uh, software packages to view the function. So let's go to Wolfram Alpha first, and we'll just type in plot, and then we'll just type in the function. Z equals sine of y times e to the parentheses negative x. The parentheses is very important. Press enter and see what happens. It's computing. It's done computing. Down here is the contour plot. Um, not very useful right now, the way it currently is, but we can change our views. So let's make x go from, say, negative 2 to positive 2. It looks like there's some interesting stuff happening in that region. So I'm going to go back to the input bar and type 4x equals negative 2 dot dot dot. You have to type it three times, positive 2. And then I'll press enter again. Aha, uh -huh. this is a little bit more useful. Look at the 3D plot and look at the 2D plot. The highest points are a lighter color and the lowest points are a darker color. So if you can imagine this flattened out, you would get this contour plot. And these lines represent lines of constant height. Okay, that's really all it is. Now let's go into MVT and see how this is uh, similar to it. We'll click the button up here for plotting a 3D function. f of xy is equal to sine of y times e to the negative x. Again, you have to include that parentheses. We'll click plot and we'll get this. Now by default, our x's and y's go from negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10, and our z goes from negative 20 to positive 20. We have to change that, so click Show Options, and we'll change that. f of xy, that's z, that's only going to go from negative 1 to 1. I don't have to graph anything to know that. Uh, sine of anything is always going to be between negative 1 and 1. Independent variable, negative 2 to 2, and negative 2 to 2, and now I'll click Plot. That looks a lot better. Let's turn this around. So that's more or less the same view. There it is. And we'll go to Appearance Options, we'll refine the mesh, and we'll change the hue. And I'll click Plot to do that. All right, and put the hue all the way up. Now again, the higher something is, the brighter it is, and the lower something is, the darker it is. I'll project this into the XY plane because that's exactly what Wolfram Alpha did, projected into the XY plane. 
and I get more or less the same thing. The downside is I don't have discrete lines. I have kind of these bands of colors. But you should see that these are very similar. Here's a high peak. There's a high peak. Uh, here's kind of a low trough. And there's that low trough. Okay, so that's Wolfram Alpha and MVT. What's next? GNU plot, a fun program. Okay, so let's let's get that out of the way. GNU plot. So to plot a 3D function in GNU plot, I type s plot and then sine y times exp. That's how GNU plot interprets exponential negative x parentheses and press enter and this is my output all right now you might be saying that doesn't that doesn't look exactly perfect that's not the most beautiful thing i've ever seen and well you're right we have to change the x and y in fact we have to name them because we can't even see them naming them is pretty easy uh, set x label x y label y, z label z, and I'll replot. Now I have x, y, and z. Okay, let's uh, set x range from negative 2 to 2. Set y range negative 2 to 2, and set z range negative 1 to 1. Replot. Looks a little bit better but we can make this mesh a little bit finer. So set ISO samples to, uh, let's do 25. Replot, a little bit finer. Now it's transparent, but that's okay because all I can do is go to set hidden and then replot, and that will give me a more solid looking surface. I don't have contour plots yet. They're coming, they're on the way. Okay. I can set contour base and replot, and there they are. There are the contour plots. Now I can also set contour surface, and you can see them right on the surface. So uh, at a height of 0.5, you can see this blue line traces out everything that's at height 0.5, right? But I probably want them on the base. So set contour base replot. And now you may ask, all right, how do I get this function out of the way? Because I want to look just at the, the contour plots on the surface. And twisting this around can give some people vertigo. Um, here's how to do it. A couple of quick commands. We want to unset surface. That will get rid of the surface for us. And now I want to set the view so that I'm looking straight down. And that would be set view 0 0 and replot and now I'm looking straight down at it that's how you get contours with GNU plot now if I want more contours I can go to 3d I forget the command but you can go to 3d contours uh, let's see number of contours up here and say I want 50 that will be the command you could type in as well and then replot and now I've got this irritating key which tells me what all the contours are so I can unset the key and that will get rid of that so that's GNU plot pretty useful commands uh, really nice program once you get the hang of it alright what's left on the agenda uh, DP graph that's another fun one so here is DP graph We'll click the Edit menu. This will pop up. And I want to graph z equals sine of y times e to the parentheses negative x. And execute. And there's some sort of error. Execute. Again, there's an error. Sometimes it's a bit of a pain. I apologize for that. Let's just do z equals e to the x and see where I went wrong. OK, there's z equals e to the x. z equals sine of e to the x. Execute good. And then z equals sine of y 
times e to the x. Execute. There we go. Now I'd want to have a bounding box, so I have to scroll up to where it says 3D box. Make that true. Uh, this is the resolution. Scroll down a little bit for the resolution. I want to make my resolution 50. And again, the minimum x should be 2, maximum x should be 2, minimum y should be 2, maximum y should be negative 2. Z goes from negative 1 to 1, and now I'm ready to graph. There's a pretty graph. And if we look at it from this point of view, just using the arrow keys, we can see again that the red color means height and the blue color means low and we get that same uh, image. Now I also have this really nifty option called scroll bar. If I click the scroll bar and then do a Z slice and click OK, this will give me contour plots for any value of Z in my window and I just have to slide it. So there's uh, the contour plots for Z equals negative 0.06213 if you're interested. And there they are for negative 1 and there they are for positive one, and you can slide them. Now, additionally, I can do the slicing for all different um, variables, x, y, and z. So here's an x slice for x equals zero, and notice that this sine wave um, becomes more compressed and less compressed as we go out. We can do this also for the y variable, just for fun. Oops, let's turn this around so we can see it a bit better. And you'll see this kind of thing happen. Pretty nice. Very fun program. And at last, Winplot. Winplot is probably the, the worst, I guess, at viewing contour plots. Um, I went to Window, three-dimensional graph. Um, and then I would go to Equation, Explicit. And here I would type in z equals sine of y times e, parenthesis, negative x. Okay. Our x low will be negative 2. Our x high will be positive 2. y low will be negative 2. y high will be positive 2. Doesn't give me any options for z. That's just the way it is. And I'll click OK. And there's the graph. It looks like what we would expect, what we've seen before. Now this has the pretty nifty option of viewing, I'm sorry, one slicer. That's the menu you have to click, one and then slicer. And now I can take this and drag it, and that will show me a slice on my, on my um, graph. And it only works for x and y. It doesn't really work for z. This is pretty useful when you're considering partial derivatives and you really want to know what this thing looks like because you can do tangent planes and tangent lines at any point you like. Okay, So that's some of the graphing software and how to use it. Um, make good use of this stuff. Uh, explore. And if you find something that works better than what you've seen here, please let me know. Uh, I'll leave you with this. Now you give it a try. Here are some functions. Plot them. Look at their contour plots. Remember to change your x and y and z bounds as necessary. Uh, hope you had fun. Hope this was uh, useful. And again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Have a great day.